we are online. I hope everyone's doing really well this um, strange term that we're having. Uh, we have some new faces with us. Uh, Mark, I'm going to apologize. I'm going to do my best with your name. It's Mark Gaviepe, and Mark has uh, extensive uh, English as a second language teaching experience in the youth sector, in the English school board sector, if I'm not mistaken, and now you are doing RECI, and he has generously volunteered to give his time today to join us. And some of you probably already know Roxanne Roy, who is an English teacher at Val Valle de Tisserin. Um, and she's joining us today to give us a tour of teams. So thank you for, uh, in the chat box, putting the, the platforms that you're using. I was proposing that today we go over um, three platforms in this order. But again, as you know, if you have questions, if you want to share your experiences, your tips and tricks, please do. We're all learning from each other. There's stuff I didn't know that I've learned from Roxanne. Uh, and there might be things that you find useful as well. Uh, nous allons commencer avec Teams. Uh, Roxanne va parler en français pour uh, uh, beaucoup de monde, mais uh, si jamais vous ne, uh, vous ne me comprenez pas, just dites-moi si quand je parle en anglais. Uh, après, uh, I thought we would turn it over to Mark, who could talk about Google Classroom. Some of you are using that. And then we have a few people using Moodle. So Mark, if you wanted to offer what you know about that. And after, just to insert after Roxanne, there's a couple of things I'd like to add about Teams. So Roxanne, if everyone's ready, uh, she's going to show us how she set up her classroom. Roxanne, si vous êtes prête, madame. Oh, oui, ça va bien. Euh, je vais le faire en français cette fois-ci. J'aurais pu le faire en anglais. Mais je vais vous montrer comment j'ai organisé mes classes d'anglais. Donc, euh, vous allez avoir mon écran. Alors, dans Teams, euh, comme vous pouvez voir ici, à l'écran, euh, tous mes élèves ont un canal privé. C'est la manière la plus facile que j'ai trouvée euh, de interagir avec les élèves et qu'il n'y ait pas trop de place à vérifier. Euh, je dois vous dire que c'est surprenant, mais euh, j'ai beaucoup d'élèves euh, qui s'y connaissent très, très peu. Ils connaissent très bien leur téléphone, très peu le reste. Euh, donc, en faisant des canaux privés où ils peuvent avoir leur discussion euh, et où je peux mettre des fichiers en privé, euh, ça a été qu ce qui a été le plus facile. Je vais vous montrer par après comment le faire. Donc, pour mes élèves, eux, tout ce qu'ils voient, c'est le canal général et cela leur nom. Ils ne voient pas les autres noms. Dans le canal euh, de chaque élève, dans leur boîte fichier, ils ont tous euh, des documents qui sont vraiment les documents, le checklist qui est le document que j'ai créé, qui leur dit quelle page qu'ils doivent faire dans leur cahier, combien d'heures. Euh, qu'ils peuvent mettre par chapitre pour arriver dans les 50 heures. J'ai ajouté les Instructional Grids qu'on peut trouver sur le site euh, ESL Québec. Euh, et puis, j'ai mis deux copies des grilles d'évaluation pour les Learning Situations que j'avais créées. Euh, Qu'est-ce qui est bien cette année, c'est que pour remplir les grilles d'évaluation, moi, j'ai trouvé que je prends mon euh, iPad, j'ouvre le document, je le remplis avec mon crayon, puis une fois que j'ai le OK, c'est déjà rajouté dans leur compte. Fait que les élèves ils trouvent ça super intéressant que ça rentre direct dans le compte. Euh, alors, ça, j'ai tous des dossiers que j'ai déjà créés. Donc, à chaque fois que je crée un nouvel élève, je rajoute euh, les dossiers à leur nom. Je vais vous en montrer un qui a changé. Lorsqu'un élève termine un sigle, je crée le dossier du sigle précédent, j'insère tous les fichiers et là, je peux euh, rajouter euh, les fichiers euh, qui sont pertinents au sigle où ils sont rendus. Alors, tout qu ce qui est dans leur canal privé sont des fichiers qui sont adressés à eux, euh, où ils peuvent avoir euh, une note ou quelque chose comme ça. Par contre, dans le canal général, c'est comme ça que j'ai créé, dans les fichiers, ici, on trouve vraiment euh, plus tout ce qui est pertinent au cours et qui n'est pas euh, adressé à un élève. 
dans tous les fichiers audio, ça se trouve ici. Et puis, dans le support de cours, hein, j'ai créé des sous-dossiers pour chacun des sigles où j'ai pu insérer le corrigé de chacun des cahiers euh, et toutes sortes d'outils ou de stratégies que j'ai développées euh, ou que j'ai trouvées qui peuvent être pertinents aux élèves pour faire leur cahier. Comme vous pouvez voir ici, il y en a, il y en a beaucoup. Et euh, j'ai fait ça pour chacune de mes équipes. Qu'est-ce qu'il faut savoir, par contre, euh, avec Teams? c'est que quand on crée des canaux privés, il y a une limite de canaux privés qu'on peut faire par équipe. Cette limite est 30. Donc, j'ai plus qu'une équipe en ce moment parce que j'ai plus que 30 élèves. C'est la contrainte. Euh, par contre, je vous dirais que mon expérience euh, de travailler avec euh, les élèves dans Teams, euh, ça marche bien. Ils peuvent me rejoindre facilement. Euh, c'est aussi, je l'ai mis en place dans la classe en ce moment, parce qu'on se dit tout le temps, si on retourne à un confinement, il faut qu'ils soient capables de retrouver leur matériel. Donc, j'ai tout mis le matériel sur Teams cette année, dans l'optique que si jamais il y a une fermeture, qu'on re, se retrouve uniquement en ligne, euh, les élèves étaient déjà habitués. Là, je vais attendre avant de montrer comment copier d'une équipe à l'autre. Est-ce qu'il y en a qui ont des questions? Um... Thank you, Roxanne. Uh, all of your students really know how to manipulate the uh, Padlet. And uh, so we have our Padlet, which links to um, the, uh, the Wix site mm -hmm. uh, for English second language. So do I, re I don't, like for me personally, I wouldn't, I don't see the pertinence of putting all that information in Teams when they can uh, access the Padlet easily and the Wix site. And they know, like, they, they really know how it works. They know how to go to their course information uh, and all the resources. They know how to go get learning situations and, um, and how to get all the information on the course as well, the course objective, everything. They have all the tools. So, and the Padlet has the online dictionaries, everything. So I don't uh, like, I, do you, you know, I think that would, that would be sufficient for me. What do you think? Yeah, it, de it really depends from one person to another. My students um, right now like to have one um, environment where everything is, okay. uh, where they can chat if they need to, they can right. tell me what's going on. And I have some students that This is more than enough for them. Right. Uh, and it really depends. If uh, the students are used to um, going online on the Padlet, then it's fine. It's my way that I got that was uh, a standard that everyone could get in and understand. Thank you. Mark? Yeah, I just wanted to add to that. Uh, thank you, Heidi. I think that it's very important. We've been working a lot with the Anglophone sector on uh, you know, everything from Teams to Moodle and we use Padlets and things like that. I think what's very important is first and foremost, you as a teacher need to be comfortable with whatever technology yeah. you're using. That is the absolutely most important thing. You need somewhere to put stuff and you need somehow to communicate uh, online with your students. That could be uh, visually or it can be through email or even chat or things like that. The, the second thing is you have to incorporate using that technology in your teaching time. The students need to be yeah. shown how it works and it has to be part of, of your teaching time. So if Padlets work for you, Heidi, then more power to you, you go for it. You know, the whole idea is if and when things sort of go south and we end up um, being, uh, you know, everybody's stuck at home again, You need to be comfortable, your students need to be comfortable so that we can continue teaching and learning. And that's really what, you know, that's what we're trying to do with, with the Anglo concept. Yeah, and Mark, I, I would push on that. The reason I'm so much in Teams is that because all the teachers in um, our center are using Teams. So it's pushing on, uh, it's not only in ESL, you have it in math, in French. So we're trying to keep them all in one spot. Laurie had a question, go ahead, Laurie. Yes, Roxanne, could you share a little bit with um, how it went teaching your students to use Teams? Oh, um, well, 
Nous, on a une entrée en formation qui leur montre un peu euh, comment Teams fonctionne. Par contre, j'ai trouvé qu'il est plus utile d'avoir l'élève à côté de moi, m'assurer qu'ils euh, qu l'ont installé. Euh, pour certains, il faut vraiment leur tenir la main pour l'installer. Euh, mais une fois qu'ils l'ont appris comment ça, ça travaille, étant donné que les corrigés, euh, tout le matériel est là, ils doivent se l'approprier. Euh, et ça va très, très bien, je vous dirais. Euh, les élèves aiment beaucoup ça, euh, d'avoir cette autonomie d'aller dans leur matériel. Euh, J'en ai certains que même quand ils sont en classe, ils vont m'envoyer un message dans Teams pour dire « j'aimerais pouvoir aller au bureau ».« So I need to see you ». Euh, donc, je peux les appeler. Euh, moi, j'encourage beaucoup. Je leur ai dit, j'encourageais beaucoup ça parce que je veux qu'ils vivent au quotidien euh, d'aller dans Teams puis de voir comment ça peut être simple pour quand on le fait à distance. Et vous devez savoir aussi que nous, à notre centre, on fait euh, un enseignement hybride. Donc, je n'ai que 18 pupitres dans ma classe. J'ai des classes de 25. Donc, euh, il m'arrive d'avoir euh, plusieurs personnes qui sont en virtuel, en même temps que ceux qui sont en classe. C'est de là l'importance d'avoir une plateforme que tout le monde est à l'aise. Were you able to show everyone how you shared multiple? No, to share, to copy files from one class to another, you have to go through SharePoint. Would it be possible to walk us through that? Because that's something I didn't know. Yeah, I, I can show you. Um, What I found out with SharePoint is if your, your classrooms are, are not, si on ne les suit pas, sont plus durs à trouver, il faut faire la recherche. Euh, mais par contre, une fois qu'on a, attendez, je vais aller chercher la bonne classe. That was something I didn't know how to do. So, quand j'ai créé des canaux pour chaque élève, je l'ai trouvé... Um, Tedious, sorry. <laughs> Copier et charger chaque dossier, chaque document. So, to copy and paste mass files, I think that is a time saver. Ouais, mais ça l'a été, euh, je vais vous dire, regardez encore, là, il me donne tout le temps des problèmes. Ce n'est pas, pas tout le temps facile de se trouver euh, dans les équipes parce que souvent, dans les derniers qu'on a fait, si je vous le montre, là, que dans le SharePoint, euh, j'ai eu des difficultés euh, à trouver. Une fois qu'on l'a, ça va bien. Mais d'emblée, il nous emmène toujours euh, dans les noms de nos élèves qu'on a fait les dernières fois. Je suis un petit peu moins à l'aise parce qu'une fois qu'on le trouve, les documents, on peut copier d'un à l'autre. Euh, mais là, malheureusement, là, il va falloir que je recherche encore moi, j'ai trouvé que SharePoint est le fun pour quand on a besoin de transférer des choses, mais pour, euh, je vais être bien honnête, là, puis je suis à l'aise, pour trouver nos sites comme il faut, c'est plus difficile. Euh, donc, qu'est-ce que j'ai fait? Moi, je vais vous dire que j'ai fait pour pallier à ça, c'est que j'ai créé déjà dans euh, mon dossier, euh, euh, dans, dans mon, mes euh, dossiers personnels, tous les dossiers que j'ai besoin et je les recopie dans les, dans les équipes pour m'éviter d'avoir ce trouble-là. Mais SharePoint est supposé nous faire ça. Euh, mais euh, comme je vous dis, on est encore dans le, la découverte, on est encore dans euh, comment travailler avec. Moi, j'ai pallié à ce problème-là en créant euh, dans mes fichiers personnels un dossier que tous mes dossiers que j'avais dans mes équipes pour facilement faire le drag and copy, parce que le SharePoint, une fois qu'on le trouve, ça va bien. Mais comme j'ai eu, je n'avais pas le temps à un moment donné, comme là, il ne veut pas, euh, ça prend plus de temps, fait que j'ai créé mes dossiers, puis je fais, à chaque élève que je crée, c'est ça que je fais. J'ouvre mon, mon explorateur de fichiers, j'ouvre mon dossier, je fais la copie, click and drag. C'est qu'est-ce qu'il y a de plus facile, je vais vous dire, là, on s'en va vers les choses les plus faciles. Et puis ça, c'est vraiment, là, une fois qu'on a organisé nos dossiers dans notre explorateur de fichiers, il n'y a plus de problème. Would you happen to have a, a, one of the rubrics that you use to evaluate your students and show us how you upload that for, the, for you and for the student to see? Uh, the, the learning situation? 
Yeah, the, an instructional grid, or I don't know which one you, you use, the learning situation grid. Or I, I do the learning situation grid. Let me just get in. You're doing great considering you're letting me put you on the spot. <laughs> okay. No, no, great. So the evaluation grids that I use are these. Okay. Um, what I do is, uh, because I have my iPad, I open the PDF on my iPad. I'll do a little test and show you what it looks like here. The students, this, the students, it, it, it is very funny because the students really get into this. <laughs> they think it's pretty cool that I can write on my iPad and as soon as I'm done, it's on there. So. On my iPad, it's really easy to upload it. And I'll just do a test here and write test. Yeah, you can evaluate my English. Yeah, I'll show you. I have to go back. As soon as I've done OK, it should come in. No, I'm not out of it. That's why. I'll be back here. There you go. Um, and so what I do now is I'm, I, I don't use papers. Um, I evaluate them on my iPad. As soon as I'm done and I'm out of the document, they can click in and see all my comments and the evaluation grid all filled out. Um, the students really like this. The other thing with this that's really interesting by having all of this there is that if I'm ever sick, or something, you know, if, if I'm out for a while, I can add a um, teacher to my teams and they have access to everything. And so it's an easy way. There's no paper, no binder to carry around because last year that's what happened. Uh, my binder was at school. I wasn't allowed to go in. And so this year I decided I was going to put everything online for that. Can, I'm just curious, can I ask, what are you using to do your writing on your, on your grid? Oh, I have a, an iPad and Apple Pencil. Oh, 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 dreamy. Nice. But this can be, uh, and, and a PDF, uh, what I've found is if you're working with um, a tablet, PDF documents work the best um, to write on. Um, Word documents require you to click and click to get into it to write, and sometimes they shift. PDF documents, perfect. Uh, we just had a question, but I think it was answered in the, uh, in the chat. Heidi asked, uh, are your learning situation grids public for us to potentially use? And then Janet, if I understand correctly, this Padlet yeah. is, is um, public? Yeah, Janet yeah. always answers my questions. <laughs> <laughs> she knows me now. But, no, those grids are on the ESL Quebec website. Yeah. The, the learning situation rubrics. Yeah, I shared them um, a while back. Everyone to use, thank you. Yes, you guys are all very generous. Oh, quelque chose j'ai fait ici, new student. Ça c'est quand quand je reçois des nouvelles élèves, j'ai mis j'ai mis une feuille de d'accueil de classe, and aussi j'ai mis. Oh boy, it's charging here. Uh, C'est ici oh, que j'ai ajouté tous mes tests de vocabulaire. Si vous avez eu la chance de voir le webinaire de l'année passée avec Professeur Tom Cobb, l'importance du vocabulaire de base. Uh, so j'ai mis ici les URL pour deux tests de vocabulaire. So chaque fois que je reçois une nouvelle élève ou un nouvel élève, je peux les envoyer ici, faire les tests de vocabulaire. Comme ça, je peux les classer et avoir une idée de leur niveau. Aussi, si je veux, je peux acheter, euh, j'ai le test de classement seulement, le, le, la partie adulte, pas euh, la vidéo et tout ça. Je, même, je peux l'acheter après, mais c'est euh, barré. Donc, so, je dois donner accès à l'élève avant. Um, yeah, so c'est tout dans une classe, mais il peut le faire et then je peux voir les résultats après. Pour, pour quelques raisons, dans les élèves bloqués, je ne sais pas comme, pourquoi, je ne peux pas ajouter l'anglais, je veux vous montrer, mais pour l'instant, je vais le faire ici. Uh, OK. So, uh, une, quelque chose de nouveau que j'ai appris uh, cette semaine, ça s'appelle Planner. 
um, ça c'est pour donner des tâches et j'ai pensé que ça serait très utile pour chaque élève parce que c'est individuel, même pour toutes les disciplines. Like, si je veux que mon élève termine son, son texte ce vendredi, euh, comme vous comprenez, des fois les élèves ont besoin de, de la structure, même si on est vir virtuel ou est en classe. C'est bon s'ils si ont des, des dates d'échéance devant eux. So, vous pouvez faire, uh, you know, finish text, for example. Uh, and then, si vous ne voulez pas annoncer dans le chat, vous décliquez ça. And then, vous pouvez donner uh, l'heure et uh, les détails et tout ça. So, ça va apparaître. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Comme j'ai dit, ça doit être applicable là, mais je ne sais pas pourquoi, je ne suis pas l'expert en Teams non plus. On est on est en train d'apprendre. So while that's loading, um, that's, those were the two things I wanted to show you, the planner and uh, adding websites. There, are, there is a question concerning learning situations. Go ahead, Caroline. I, I do use Teams and I want to put in the learning situations in their devoir and their homework, but I'm finding that um, they lose their integrity And I'm wondering, has anybody been able to figure out a way to put the learning situations in a formulaire, like in a, like a PDF formulaire or a word model? Uh, and does it work where they just have to type in and uh, the, 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 the learning situation doesn't lose its integrity because sometimes they'll open it up and I've lost the pictures. The, uh, the whole text has been elongated, and I'm just wondering if anybody's been found a way to have a stable way for them to, you know, uh, send it over the internet and fill it out without losing. Uh, that's what I'm trying to figure out now, and I've just, I've run into problems with both, with the um, PDF fillable form and also with the word uh, formulaire. They each have their pros and cons, and um, I'm, I'm just stuck. I don't know which one to use. Uh, there is a suggestion about class cake. Would you like to talk about that, Catherine? Yes, of course. Um, well, I've, I haven't started uh, using class cake yet, but I'm looking into it. Uh, basically, you need the PDF file, mm -hmm. and then uh, you can assign it to a specific student. and. Uh, It's actually interactive, so you can see what the student is doing at that moment, and you can uh, correct it. You can do, um, you can either write a comment or you can um, record a comment. So I think it's really useful, but I'm I'm still looking into it, so I can't tell you uh, any more information. But uh, yeah, I think it's a really uh, interesting program. Yeah. Uh That sounds interesting because um, I know, uh, like uh, with the um, uh, the Office 365 forms, I thought that would be great. But then I realized that they could not enregistre; they couldn't uh, download it and keep it. And because the problem is, is sometimes I say, "Okay, go do your prep book, and I want to see your answers, and we'll discuss your preparation." So what it needs to do is go back and forth all the time. And you add your comments. Um, so, is anybody else running yeah. into this problem? Um, Caroline, what I what I've done um, is uh, I've used with they were taking a picture, and I could put comments on the image. I used a, a, a Adobe Scan the application. Oh, okay. And so they could scan it with a picture, and it was very clear. And then I would use my Apple Pencil on my iPad to add a handwritten comment and send back the document. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I was hoping for, I, I, I do that with their homework, with their books. They take pictures, I, uh, they send it in, I, I write comments, I send it back, or we partage l'écran over Teams and, and talk about the, the page. But I was hoping for something a little bit more formal with the learning situations where they could just write in the grids, their answers, send it to me, and uh, yeah. 
I think um, a student, um, a teacher at my center uh, made a tutorial on class kick, so I could ask her if I could share it with you all. Oh, that would be great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, Carolyn, when I put my, when I put my documents in OneNote, um, I'm relying on my memory, which is questionable. This was last year. Okay. I believe I found that they, I didn't have as many issues as when I loaded them up in the files part of Teams. Okay. I don't know if that's helpful. OneNote is a lot of work, but if that were me and I had that issue, I would just stick with PDF. It seems to be more stable. See, yeah, exactly, exactly. And with the thing with PDF is, um, it is a stable thing and they can write into the, the document. You just have less options when it comes to responding to the document, like with the Word document, you know, you can uh, add your comments. They give you the little bubble beside where you um, want to uh, comment on their work and stuff. It's just, yeah, like I said, there's pros and cons for each one. So I'm still exploring all kinds of possibilities. Yeah. So thanks for your guys' uh, input there. Yeah. I hope that was helpful, but I, I can see that that must have used immense, <laughs> an immense amount of time and energy spent into that. Maybe just delete the pictures. I mean, they're visual cues, but they're not the most essential information in the learning situation. That's true. Yes. And yeah. then you might, you might have a more stable uh, document because it's just the words you want to work with. I mean, when they go to do their exam, there aren't a lot of images anyways. So. No, that's, that's very true. Uh, yeah, you make a good point, Lori. That's something I'll have to consider because I mean, it's just, it's getting out of hand. They tell me they download it and it just looks like, well, pardon my language, but crap. And they get discouraged, you know, so Fair enough. anything I can make it a little bit more inviting, I guess you could say, just helps the process. Yeah, like if you were to do that, remove the pictures, and then you had your master file, like Roxanne showed us with SharePoint, how to share them amongst students, it would be a one-time investment of, of time, which is, mm -hmm. as teachers, we're really trying to reduce. Uh, so that would, that would hopefully save some time. Thank you, guys. Thank you for your question. Um, was it class kick? that people were talking about class kicks. Yes. I see yes. it in the chat box. Okay, great. Richard will, in the document collaborative in the bibliothèque on the, on the APRICO website, toujours dans la bibliothèque, vous pouvez trouver les ressources qu'on a discuté. Il va ajouter des liens. Um, okay, we are, we are moving along. If everyone's finished with Teams, I would still love to give Mark some time to talk about Google Classrooms. There's a few people using that and, and Moodle. S'il y a des questions commentaires spécifiques de Moodle et Google Classrooms, uh, on va avancer. Um, I will hand it over to Mark. Si il n'y a pas d'autres questions commentaires, mais merci beaucoup pour les questions pour Teams. Mark, if you're ready, please. Sure. I'd rather not. Uh, I have two questions. All right. What is the name and the date of the webinar which included the pre second of the. Okay, well, this is more for you than for me. Uh, from Denny. Uh, what was the name and date of the webinar which included the pre secondary vocabulary test? And secondly, do we all have access to the Cambridge Ventures extra activities? So that's, that's for you, Laura. Right. Uh, yes. Uh, Denis, thank you for that question. I will get you, I will get you the link for that. Yeah, everybody has access to the um, to the ventures to the ventures website. Uh, like I said, I access it through the Padlet, but you can just Google it. Like I think the name of it's in the front of the book, but uh, you can find it on Google. So I will get back to you with that link. All right, um, I don't really want to do, well, I'm, I'm no longer a teacher. I'm a, a consultant at this point, so I don't really have a Google Classroom. I could show you the ones that I use every once in a while with, with uh, some of the centers that I work with, but I'm, I'd like to open the floor to you. There's only about eight minutes left, and unfortunately, uh, uh, my time is a little precious right now. I can't go past 11. So is there something specific that people, the, the reason I mentioned Classroom and Moodle 
because if you look at it, they're all LMSs, right? C'est tout des, des environnements numériques d'apprentissage. Et donc, euh, nous, on travaille beaucoup plus dans le principe de comment on fait pour organiser une classe euh, pour que ça soit efficace en ligne. Puis on, on, beaucoup, dans le système anglophone, je ne sais pas si, si vous, c'est pareil, euh, on est beaucoup dans l'hybride simultané, donc des élèves qui ne sont pas en classe et d'autres élèves qui sont à l'extérieur de la classe, qui sont à la maison. Donc, euh, si vous avez des questions concernant euh, l'utilisation de l'enseignement synchrone, asynchrone, if anybody has any questions specifically with Google Classroom, I'm pretty good with that. Moodle, I'm working on it. But, uh, or generally speaking, uh, about how to organize, you know, your world online. I think it's, it's, it's extremely important right now that we organize and make sure that everything's ready to go online. So I, feel free to say, ah, uh, yeah. Well, I was going to say, if you, if people do have questions, and I do apologize that we didn't get to that, but if you do want to do more on Google Classrooms or Moodle, we can always arrange for an additional webinar. Um, there's a lot of flexibility in terms of the topics that we can present and the times. It's a question of availability. So if the need is there, that's, that's why we're all here. We're here to support each other. Let us know. Laissez-nous savoir s'il y a un besoin pour Google, un Moodle ou Google Classroom et uh, on va discuter qu'est-ce qu'on peut offrir comme un partage uh, commu a community. I'll just stop with my French. <laughs> it's all right. I think we all get it. Um, uh, sorry, go ahead, Mark. Uh, sorry. Um, for Denny's um, question about the, the um, the vocabulary webinar. I can't access the uh, chat to provide the link. I, it doesn't, I, I can't. I provided it to him directly, Lori. Awesome. <laughs> okay, continue. Okay, I do have a question though, Go ahead. <laughs> um, if I may. Uh, can you just give us like a 30 second overview of what Google Classrooms does? Because I tried, sure. I, I tried it a couple of years ago actually, and it, they ended up kicking me out thinking, I guess that it's not, a school organization, I don't know what. Um, can you just give us a, like an overview? It'll be my pleasure. Uh, so we can start with that. What I'll do is I'll share my screen. Est-ce que, je sais pas qu'est-ce qu'il veut pour vous, if you prefer to do it in English or in French. I'm going to go in English, and if there's, if you want me to stop or explain something, that'll be very happy. So Google Classroom is tied to, you're absolutely right, Janet, it's tied to what's called G Suite. That means that in, in my case, my school board, um, is a Google school board. We're also a Microsoft school board. Um, so then I, my CSSME email allows me to have a Google account. So here we have a few different things. Um, I've taken away, yeah, I've taken away all my, my um, classrooms as, uh, as a teacher. So this is stuff that we've been working on. James Byrne is one of my colleagues uh, in vocational training uh, in the Anglophone sector. The sources centers and, and back, these are two centers. Um, and so basically what does Google Classroom do? It works in the same way as Teams, but it's very focused on uh, organizing classes. So basically if, let's see which one we go to, we'll go to back, sources. So here we have, uh, basically it's, it's laid out very, very simply. As much as Microsoft gives you tons of options, and I find it to be very interesting, um, class, Classroom doesn't. Classroom sort of steers you in the, in the right direction. So the stream is right here. This is, this is basically a chat uh, between teachers and students, and you can, you can put different uh, parameters on uh, the chat if the students are allowed to post, not allowed to post, and things like that. Classwork is very interesting where you have the channels in uh, Teams. Here you just basically um, create things as you're going along and you have different things to create. So you can create an assignment, you can use Kami, you can create a quiz, you can just ask a simple question, post material, uh, and you can organize it through topic. I'm going quickly because we've got three minutes left. Each classroom has a calendar. That's my Google Calendar, as you can see. Um, and so each classroom will, will, uh, will allow you to put thing, post things up on the calendar. So uh, your, uh, you know, test uh, deadlines or different things like that, things, you know, things that are happening. And then you also have a class drive. So in Google Drive, it, which is similar to OneDrive, of course, 
you can, everything gets organized. Um, people, so you have teachers, so we're, three, I'm not a teacher, I'm a student in this one, I guess. Um, and then you have, you can have multiple teachers, which is kind of cool if you have, uh, well, I've had interns uh, to be my teachers, or uh, if you're working with another teacher and you'd like to combine uh, forces and you can both be each teachers in, in your own classrooms. Uh, and then there's a whole marking situation that I won't get into right now because uh, we're running out of time. If you ask me the question, I I'm going to tell you as a teacher that I prefer Google Classroom just because I'm not that smart. And so this helps me to get really organized and it puts things very, and I'm also very used to the Google universe. I, I use Google Classroom. I was experimenting with it in 2012. So I've been at it for quite a long time and I've gotten used to that modus operandi. I'm not dissing teams. This is just the direction that our um, school board took. If we had gone towards teams, I probably would have told you that teams is better. But I'm, uh, I do like Google and I, I, I like the collaborative aspect of Google, uh, Google, pardon me. I think it's very easy to, to go from one thing to another, especially Google Docs, uh, Google presentations and things like that. Um, I work with three other people. Uh, we live in four different places. Uh, we're, we're in three different school boards. Everything we do is on Google just because it's very easy um, for us to collaborate. So that's, that's really where I see that. I hope I answered most of your questions. And Janet, you have a question for, uh, uh, Carolyn, sorry, you have a question for Janet. So go ahead. Before we go to Carolyn, can we, can we go to Dominique who asks, yeah. is it possible to have a private, I know, uh, possible to have a private conversation with each other in Google Classroom? Yeah, you can have a, yes, uh, Dominique, you can have a conversation going through, um, an assignment or actually if you go to people here I'll uh, show my screen again and I, I'm saying this and I haven't I'm, here we go so you can email the student directly you can also have um, they put me on the spot here there we go right here okay so here what I can do is take off all students right and just choose one student, someone whom I know, I don't know. So may, maybe Marius. So then, then I can just write to Marius. So that can be done on Google. You see, it's been a lot, I've, I've never been really asked that question, but Google is, to me, very intuitive. So you just kind of, if you click around, you tend to find uh, your answers. Uh, there you go. Does that answer your, your, sub, your question, Dimitri? I guess so. Uh, Antoine, you had a question about copyright. This is a big, big topic for us. Go ahead. So I was just wondering, my students, they buy books when they're in class, but then when they go online, they won't buy any books. Like, uh, I was just wondering about the copyright. Like I tried to go and uh, let's say I, I'm going with Connecting Doors. I tried to use only 10% of, uh, of the book online, but yeah. I would just want to make sure I'm legit to, uh, to okay. make this. Uh, this is a huge thing. I'm sorry, I'm, t I'm bringing up one of the, the websites that my, uh, my partners and I use here, and I'm going to leave a link. I, I, it's not that I don't want to answer the question, it's just I have a meeting in about three minutes. This is um, from our uh, group from RECI, AGE. Uh, it's called PD, PD à la carte, donc uh, développement professionnel à la carte. And okay. this is a link to copyright and You'll notice that on the front page of the copyright stuff, uh, where, mm, yeah, there you go. Copyright matters and the fair dealing decision tool. So if I were you, Antoine, try to click on the fair deal decision tool and it will tell you. It's really, really well done. Good. Um, I, I hate to tell you this, but it, it's kind of dicey. Like there is, the problem is whether they're online or in class. In class, you have a few more rights than if they were at home which is uh, unfortunate, but uh, have a look at that. And uh, I, I think you have access to my email or something, or you can go through the data cap and you can, you can ask me, I, we, can, uh, we can come and talk to you a little bit if you'd like about copy. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, Carolyn, go ahead. Hey, just uh, that one thing about the copyright. What if you were to uh, type in the exercises from uh, Connecting Doors into like a word 
is that considered an infringement of copyright? If, if you don't, I mean, this is a very basic answer that I'm going to give you. Mm -hmm. I really believe that you should be looking at this. Since you're taking somebody, it's, it's a very simple principle. If you take somebody else's work, put it into a Word document and pretend, like, and don't say where it's from, right? If you don't, if you don't yeah. give, you know, and you don't ask permission to use it, then that's a copyright infringement. Okay, okay. Right? Fair that's enough. just a, a very basic way of looking at it. The tools that we have on the website that I just put into the chat are very helpful in terms of trying to figure out, well, is this right? Is this, I understand. I, I, I've done it too. I've taken li liquid paper and took out do not copy and made 400 copies. But I hate to tell you, it's wrong. Okay, and it's fine. wrong. And ever since, you know, now that I work here, it's like, oh, crap. Do I have to take this stupid picture that I don't like because it's Creative Commons? Yes, you do. Because that's what copyright is. And when you start publishing material, you would like that to be done too. So that's, you know, but going through Creative Commons is one way to go. Uh, but copyright's there for, for a reason. Oh, absolutely. Um, okay. Do you have other questions? Well, I did have a question for yeah, Janet. Um, I think it was last year, the year before that, I um, to have access to your Padlet, we had to ask for uh, permission. Is that still uh, the going thing? Um, actually, I removed that. I, I had even put up a note last spring that I ended up taking off this, uh, September but um, no I'm not giving access anymore because um, what happened was connecting doors gave me permission to post them on the Padlet as long as it's password protected and then I was asking teachers for proof of purchase just to make sure that they did purchase them okay. um, but with the pandemic everybody at once wanted to have access so I just I stopped doing it it was too much work Ah, uh, I see so your Padlet is no longer available it is. It is absolutely, and all the students have the password. But I'm not giving passwords to others. I'm not giving the password to other school boards, just because it's too much work. Right. Right. Because yeah. I just remember that there was so, so much cool stuff on your Padlet, and uh, now that I'm back in the swing of it's, it, I was just yeah. It's still there. I can provide the link. The only thing is that in terms of uh, copyright material, I'm not giving the passwords anymore because of that. I'll put the link in the um, in the comments. Oh, that would be great. So, Thank you. There you go. There's a lot of free material on it, though. Yeah, well, that's that's kind of what I'm looking for because we do we use connecting doors too. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, and if you want to find it, the easiest way to find it is you write in Padlet FGA Utaway, and it's the first one that comes up. Oh, perfect. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. My pleasure. I'm going to jump in right there because Mark has to go. Well, I really do have to go. I'm sorry. Thank you. No, but it was great. You. We understand. Okay. We'll let you go, and then I. Ready? Yeah. Okay. That's all right. Bye, everybody. Uh, look at the website and you can contact me there. Merci, Shaw. Thank you, everybody. Bye now. Okay, take care. Um, I do have to get going as well, but I want to thank everyone for coming. Merci tout le monde pour assister ici et assister. For Google Classroom and Moodle, if you would like another webinar on just those two, please send me or Richard, uh, maybe just one person, maybe just me, uh, your availabilities, like uh, three choices, your preferred time and date. We'll see when the La Salle is available, when we are available, and we'll try to meet that, that need because um, we'd be happy to support you. And uh, Mark, uh, well, I'll ask him if he'll take the lead on that because I do apologize we didn't get to that today. Thank you everyone for your questions. It was good seeing everybody. It's good to know that you're all doing well. Um, si il y a une demande pour uh, uh, un, un, un topic spécial uh, pour l'anglais ou la, la, la côté technique, uh, n'hésitez pas, n'hésitez pas. Don't, please don't be shy. Let us know. Okay, like I said, we're here to support each other. Uh, we're here to share and learn. Let's not do it alone. If there are no further questions or comments, I'm going to let you go because I really do need to, uh, to attend. Thanks, Flori. You're very, very welcome. It was my pleasure. Uh, again, Roxanne and Mark who are uh, volunteering their time today. The rest of you volunteering to take, taking time out of your day to come join us. It's excellent. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot.